All right, everybody. So uh, we've been working with our new friend, the Cross product. And in the last couple videos, I showed you where that formula comes from and the motivation behind it. And so the, the big idea with the Cross product is if you've got a vector A and a vector B, then if you do A cross B, that's going to give you a vector that's normal to both A and B. And the magnitude of A cross B is the area of the parallelogram that's formed by their, uh, by adding A and B to create the parallelogram. What I want to look at now is a slightly different question. What if we have a third vector, and we'll call that third vector C, and we would like to actually form a parallel pipette. So we're, now we're talking about forming a three-dimensional thing. So I'd like to apologize in advance for my drawing skills, but what I want you to try to imagine, maybe if I use different colors, we can make this a little bit more clear. So vector C can be purple. So what I'm going to do is draw things that are parallel to vector C coming off the four corners of the parallelogram. And then here is directly above, I want that to be red. Here is directly above vector B, directly above vector A, it's supposed to be the same length. This is also the same length as vector A. This is also the same length as vector B. So we've got a shape here. It is a three-dimensional box. And what I would like you to consider is how could we find the volume of that box? Well, the way that we approach 3D shapes is we find the area of the base and then we multiply by the height. So the volume of our shape is going to be the area of the base multiplied by the height. And a crucial thing here is that the height must be perpendicular to the base. So the volume of our parallelopiped is the magnitude of A cross B multiplied by the height. Well, that's great, but we don't know exactly what the height is. So let's draw the height in there. One thing I do know is that I know that the um, cross product tells me a vector that is perpendicular to both A and B. So one thing I do know is that this perpendicular axis is related to the cross product, that the cross product points in this direction. I don't know exactly how high the cross product goes up, but I know that the cross product points in that direction. So I could say it is some multiple of the cross product. I'll just say k times the cross product. But what I care about is I care about the cross product landing right here at the same height of C. So what I want to do is I want to find out how much of the cross product do I have to go up to land exactly on the height of C? Well, I can do that if I look at the angle in between vector C and the cross product. And it turns out, if I draw that angle right there, vector C is the hypotenuse. So I can label this with C. And then the relevant piece is the adjacent side. The opposite side, I mean, I could find it if I wanted to, but I don't need the opposite side. So if you think about this right triangle right here, theta is adjacent to the height of the parallelopiped. Well, that means that cosine of angle theta is equal to adjacent over C, because that's just how cosine works. Cosine's always adjacent over hypotenuse. 
So what that means is C times cosine theta is equal to the adjacent part. And that's the height right there. Okay. Now, what I can do is stick this part in right there. So the volume V is equal to A cross B dotted with C cosine theta. Now, I think we can do a little bit better than that. Because I also remember using the dot product to, um, I also remember using the dot product to uh, find the angle between two things. And I remember that we had this definition that for any two vectors, I'm not going to use A, for any two vectors V dot W, we would get magnitude V magnitude w times cosine theta. And so I'm seeing something that looks really similar to that. And I actually should mention over here on my on my um, on my drawing, this should say the magnitude of C because I'm talking about the length of that vector. So I'm going to stick a little magnitude on there. So I've got magnitude right there. Well, what do we just got here? We have a V dot W equals magnitude V, magnitude W, cosine theta. And so here is like my vector V. Here is my vector W. So what I can say now is V is equal to A cross B dotted with C. Just by applying this definition using the angles to what we had figured out about the volumes. There's one other little caveat. Because it, order matters, if I did A cross B versus B cross A, I'd get the negative answer from one to the other. But volume is a strictly positive number. We stick absolute value bars around it. And also, just to make it clear, the order of operations here, you have to do the cross product first and then do the dot product because you need to have two vectors to do the dot product of, you couldn't do like B dot C and get a number and then try to cross that with A because you can't cross a vector with a number, with a scalar. And so there's just a couple like new notational things we have to do. We stick the absolute value because the cross product is anti-commutative and we do the parentheses just to make it clear that the cross product happens before the dot product does. But I just think that's a really nice idea that the cross product dotted with the third vector actually gives you the volume of the parallel pipette. That's a really nice and clean formula that comes from just what we've learned about vectors. And then by the way, you can use this exact same idea. Um, imagine instead of making a parallel pipette that I wanted to make, let's make it into just a let's just connect a and b like a triangle and then we'll connect them to point c to make a tetrahedron triangular um triangular pyramid well in that case then i just need to stick a one sixth out in front now you might be curious okay where did i get one sixth from think about it for yourself for a second I took a parallelogram and made it into a triangle. That's half. And then I took a three-dimensional shape that was straight up and down and made it into a pyramid. That's where a third comes from. Half and a third make a sixth. So that's, um, that's kind of a nice idea. So please comment and let me know if there's anything I can do to help out.